Now, a basic sponge and baking soda can make a great eraser for little grease spots, fingerprints, and stains on your walls, or many other painted areas such as furniture or wood fences. Just sprinkle a bit of baking soda on your dry sponge and scrub the stain area in a circular motion. And then use a clean, dry cloth to wipe the baking soda off to get rid of any remaining dirt. If you're worried that this technique might ruin the paint, try just a bit of soda first and see how the surface reacts. If you want to extract the maximum amount of juice from your lemon or lime, put them first in a microwave for 15 seconds. After that, give them a little roll on a hard surface. And now, feel free to use your manual juicer. When you smash some glass or pottery on the floor, it can be pretty hard to notice and pick up all the tiny fragments, especially if the glass is transparent. Guess what can help you? A slice of bread. After you remove all the big pieces, carefully wipe a thick slice of bread across the floor to pick up any tiny fragments. They should just get stuck in the bread. But make sure to do this very carefully or just put on protective gloves. And don't absentmindedly make yourself a sandwich right afterwards. Hey, just saying. If you're a huge fan of garlic, here's a tip for you. Cut one garlic bulb in half and rub an empty bowl for a nice flavor. Now you can put your pasta, risotto, or salad in the bowl and enjoy your meal. Pringles tubes are made from a mixture of paper, plastic, and metal, which makes them a good option to organize groceries. You can paint the tubes in a plain color to make them match your stylish, minimalistic kitchen and then attach removable labels on the side. Have you ever struggled with threading a needle? Here's an easy way out. Place your toothbrush on the table and put the thread across the bristles of the brush. Now gently push the needle down over the top. The bristles will help you poke the thread up through the eye effortlessly. Once you got the loop, just use your fingers to pull it through. If you've got these annoying tea stains on your favorite mug that won't wash off, try to apply some toothpaste to your sponge. This is also applicable when you need to make your dirty cutlery shine. It's best to use a mildly abrasive sponge. It's pretty helpful when it comes to removing dark spots on dishes. Now let's say you've recently received a really gorgeous bouquet. But the flowers got this sad look in a blink of an eye. You can extend their living very easily and almost free of charge. First, fill the vase or vase with fresh water and put a couple of teaspoons of sugar. This will help to nourish the flowers. Before you put the flowers back into the vase, cut about an inch off the stem. But make sure to slice it at an angle like this. This trick will increase the surface of water absorption. Repeat this with all the stems, especially with hard ones. Now put the bouquet back into the vase or vase. The flowers should cheer up within 12 hours. If you suffer from cold feet, put them into a vase or vase. No, wait. Use a hairdryer to warm up your slippers before using them. This tip is also applicable to your outdoor winter shoes. Speaking of feet, pew, there's a great way to get rid of unpleasant smells. Apply about 10 drops of your favorite essential oil on two cotton balls. Now place the balls into the shoes and leave them overnight. Remove them in the morning and enjoy the fancy smell. You can also mix a couple of your favorite fragrances to customize your shoe fragrance even more. If your drain is a bit dirty and smelly, there's an epic tip to solve this issue. Put down a couple of spoonfuls of baking soda and pour down a little vinegar. And now step back and enjoy the show. It will foam up and help loosen any dirt. We've all tried to light a match outdoors in windy weather and failed. Well, we've been doing it all wrong. There's an easy way to prepare a matchstick in advance using a sharp knife. Carefully carve back the four corners just behind the head of the matchstick. Then repeat the same technique one more time so it looks like this. These eight little splinters will help create a stronger wind-resistant flame. If you have a small wardrobe with limited space for hanging new clothes, remove some metal pull tabs from the tops of old drinking cans. They can make the perfect holding loops for fixing the second hanger. Just put the ring over the hook. This is how you can double and even triple the storage space on one hanging rail. If you need to make an emergency candle, you can use one very common item from your fridge. Have you guessed what it is? Butter. Cut off a piece of chilled butter and place it on a heat-proof dish. 
poke a hole straight down through the center using a toothpick or a wooden stick. Now we need a wick. You can use a common cotton string or twine. Cut the corresponding length and poke it through the hole so it goes all the way to the bottom of your candle. Gently coat the end of the wick with butter and light up your brand new DIY candle. Use hair straightening tongs to smooth out those annoying creases on your tie. Or let's say you're working in a shop and you have to deal with fluffy piles of cash. The tongs will help you iron your money to put them in smaller stacks, which then fit neatly into your backpack. Hey, let's not go there. Wow, this zipper is tough. Why can't it slide smoothly like all other zippers? But don't rush to throw away your coat. Grab a bar of soap and gently rub it up and down against the zipper. Repeat it on both sides. Can you feel the difference? Cut one leg off your old tights and put two long cardboard tubes inside it. Go ahead and thread it under your internal door with one tube on each side. This will protect you from any draft because the tights will seal up any gap under the floor. You can also use this trick when you need to make a full blackout in the room. Just make sure to use thick black tights. Let's say you're visiting a conference in another city, and your schedule will be very busy. You can prepare your outfits for each day in advance and put them into different compartments of your hanging clothes storage organizer this way. Now, put it right down into your suitcase, zip it, and you're ready to go! When you arrive at the hotel, you can just carefully pull out this organizer and hang it in the closet in just two seconds. But don't forget to take the shoes, too. Is there a way to drive a nail into a wall without hurting your fingers? The answer is yes. Grab your comb and push the nail in between the prongs. This way, you'll keep your fleshy fingers far away and safe. And once you've got it started, you can easily slide out the comb and finish driving the nail. If you need an emergency metal scrubby sponge to wash your pot or pan, use a piece of tin foil. Crumple it up into a ball, apply a little bit of dish soap, and your brand new sponge is ready. Now start scrubbing and get ready to be amazed! It works really well, huh? By the way, the tin foil doesn't have to be new. You can recycle the piece you've already used for cooking. And the final tip is for perfectionists. If your shower head has a hard water buildup, the water won't come out straight. To fix this, fill a plastic bag with plain white vinegar. Then put the shower head inside the bag, attach it with a band, and leave it overnight. In the morning, you can give your shower head a little scrub with an old toothbrush or clothes brush. This should help remove the remaining hard water dirt. This trick is also applicable for faucet heads. Ready to discover some life hacks that are low-key useful but high-key strange and ridiculous? Well, let's go! You wake up feeling brave and dangerous. You're going to wear an all-white shirt on your morning walk to work whilst drinking your Americano. But the plan backfires as you spill the coffee all over yourself. So you've instantly just gone from feeling like a ferocious polar bear to a helpless white furry puppy. But no worries, all you need is a black marker, make sure it's not permanent, and a world map. Find a place that shows you a set of islands. Hey, why not use the Bahamas? Now add some contouring using your marker. Write the word Bahamas outside of the stains. And voila! Those coffee stains on your shirt now represent one of the most famous sets of islands in the world. You've just transformed a fashion disaster into a funky, stylish masterpiece. Now, go get yourself another coffee. Have you ever looked up at the moon, convinced that there was a face looking back at you? Most of us have, which is weird given that the moon is nearly 250,000 miles away from Earth. This supposed face, of course, is just an illusion. It's shaped by the dark splotches of lunar maria. These are smooth plains formed by the lava of ancient volcanic eruptions. I want to show you a life act that will allow you to feel like this famous face of the moon. All you need is an empty roll of toilet paper and your phone. Oh, and that beautiful face of yours. Simply put your face near the hole of the toilet roll and your phone beneath the bottom hole. All that's left to do is snap a picture and take a peek. Next up, are you a snacker? I mean, you just can't stand going into business meetings or classrooms where you're not supposed to eat. I might have found a solution if you're someone who likes Jesus. 
All you need is a chapstick tube, <clears throat> an empty one. Simply fill up the empty tube with cheese, and just like that, you have a discreet cheese dispenser at your mercy. <laughs> now, it's estimated that over 65% of people use lip balm. Some use it daily, others carry it around with them just in case their lips get dry. Who's going to suspect you're actually munching on cheese if you pull a lip balm container out? On average, for those who manage to actually fall asleep on planes, 61% will experience a below-average sleep. A lot of people have trouble falling asleep there altogether. But it's not impossible if you can replicate a sound sleeping environment. I present to you a sleeping mask. Just grab a hair bobble, bring all of your long hair to the front, and tie it as normal. It's literally like having a set of curtains over your face, which is what we need since the absence of light will send a signal to our bodies that it's time to rest. Now, according to research, two out of every three Americans name popsicles among their favorite foods to eat during the summer. Who can blame them? It's delicious! The only problem? How quickly it melts. But I've got something that's going to help out all of us popsicle lovers. All you need is a popsicle of your choice and a cupcake wrapper? That's right! When you take your popsicle out of the freezer, it's in a solid state because the particles that conform to it are together. As the heat increases, which in 99% of cases is the moment it leaves the freezer, these particles begin to loosen and melt. With each drip from your popsicle comes a tear from your eye. Now it's time to wipe those tears away. All you have to do is pop the popsicle stick through the cupcake wrapper. The wrapper will then catch any of the drips that drop from your popsicle, or any tears of joy that drops from your face. Let them soak in the wrapper while you soak up the sun and enjoy your popsicle carefree. Now, one in every three Super Bowl parties have chips laid out for their guests. And there's a good chance you might serve some to your friends that are currently on their way over. But what flavor will they like? If you only have mm. one kind of potato chip brand at your house, no problem. Let's spice this up. To give your friends a wide range to choose from, you're going to lay them out in a muffin tin. Just fill each hole with a different type of condiment. Your friends are going to think you're the best host ever. Research has revealed that salsa is often the most popular dipping sauce, followed by French onion and guacamole. So make sure you don't forget to lay these out on that muffin tin. Ever get home from a long day of work, excited to have a steaming hot bath? There's just one problem. Your bathtub is missing its bath plug. Don't panic, I have a solution! Dip back into your party supplies, and you'll be dipping into a nice hot bath in no time. You just need to get your hands on a balloon. But stop, don't fill it up with oxygen. Instead, simply fill it up with water and tie a knot on the balloon. Oh, and resist that urge to throw it at someone. Now, go put the water balloon in place of the bath plug. Make sure you fit it nicely and firm. You can check it by turning on the tap to see if the water begins to fill. If it does, it means it's time for you to finally enjoy that hot bath you wanted. Now, would you like to make it the best bath ever? By having a beverage of your choice floating beside you throughout? Let me show you how. Go back outside your car. Actually, put your clothes back on first. I promise you'll be back inside for that bath soon. Grab your phone holder from inside the car. Run back to your bathroom and stick it against the wall by the bathtub. Position it in a way that will fit the glass containing your drink. Make sure the holder's secure, as I'm confident you don't want to be bathing in spilled Coca-Cola. Now that you've ensured this, I'll leave you to enjoy this much-delayed bath and move on to the next life hack. Speaking of beverages, those cans of soda you just bought get warm way too fast. Let me help you out. Quickly pop to a nearby store and buy some ice. Then just find an empty cardboard box and a plastic bag. Open up the box and then cover it with the plastic bag as if you're going to use it as a trash can. Then get your ice and pour the necessary amount inside the box. All of a sudden, you have a fully functioning drink cooler at your disposal. Go grab those cans of soda and put them inside it. Check back in a few minutes to find them nice and cold. 
In the meantime, just enjoy the sun. Sometimes, as you're going for a walk, you'll encounter surfaces such as muddy trails and forests that have the potential to ruin your shoes. Even if they're walking shoes, you still want them to look good, right? Well, let me show you a trick to keep those sneakers of yours sparkling. What's more, all you need is a balloon. Blow the balloon up and keep the air hole clutched with your hand so as to keep it inflated. Put the balloon on the ground, keeping the air hole covered, and put your hand inside your shoe. You heard that right, hand, not foot. Then press down on the balloon with the shoe. This will cause the balloon to deflate, and once finished, it will be tightly wrapped around the bottom of your shoe. This will act as a perfect form of protection against any dirty surfaces you'll be walking over on your travels. Now just do the same with your other shoe, and away you go! Now when you get home, you'll probably be so excited to get inside, kick your feet up, and relax. This is why struggling through all the keys on your keyring upon arriving is so annoying and tiresome. Well, don't worry, I've got an easy and satisfying fix that will make this process much more instant moving forward. All you need is some nail polish. Well, a couple of different colors. Designate a specific color for each key and get painting. Then just let the paint dry off for a bit. When it's done drying, you have a new color-coded set of keys to your name. Convenient, isn't it? Hello, your luxury bag package has arrived. We have a super romantic recipe for you. It'll especially be great for Valentine's Day or your someone special's birthday. Breakfast could not get any cuter than this. Now this hack is going to take your veggie sandwiches to a whole other level. Just be careful with the boiling hot oil. Fill the fried dough pocket with your favorite vegetables and bon appetit! Oh, this video is making me hungry already! You might want to write down the ingredients in your recipe book for this one. You know, just to remember everything later. One color is not enough, by the way. If you want this cookie to be a joyful burst of color, that is, don't worry, the colors are going to be bright and gorgeous after they're baked. Make sure not to burn them. I somehow always manage to do that. Cookies and milk, everyone? Potatoes must be one magical vegetable, wouldn't you agree? Because there are probably more than a thousand different dishes you can make with them. And they're all delicious. There are two types of people at a cafe. Those who get a slice of cake or those who get a cookie. But I personally get both. Talk about having a sweet tooth, am I right? We already made colorful cookies, so why not make a rainbow cake now? Are you throwing a big party at your home soon? Then this dish is just for you. Because it's super easy to prepare, it's big, it's filling, and it's delicious. Oh, and did I mention it probably would take 15 minutes to prepare? Look at the cheese melt. Makes my mouth water. I could eat this for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Vegetables have a bad reputation, you know. Most people think they're boring and tasteless. But we're here to fix that common misconception. Something can be both nutritious and yummy at the same time. Take these carrot rolls, for example. They could be a great alternative if you're not fond of eating sushi. Just make sure to dip them in soy sauce for the full experience. Here's a quick meal you can prepare just with everyday breakfast items that you already have in your fridge. And it's super fresh and healthy. Perfect dinner for hot summer nights if you ask me. Add the topping of your choice and enjoy. Another example of how vegetables are tasty gifts from Mother Nature. This kind of looks like a forest, wouldn't you agree? The key here is to leave no empty space behind. By the way, having a good oven is key if you want to experiment in the kitchen. Let's say it's the middle of the night. There's no takeout place left open, but you're craving some fast food. 
this is just the recipe for that. Come on, admit it, you thought this was gonna be a version of pizza, right? Anyone want crunchy pasta? This is healthier than store-bought chips, you know. By the way, here's a fun fact about pasta that not many people know. The first reports of people eating pasta actually came from China. Speaking of sausages, I'm on a fun fact roll here, so here's one about hot dogs for you. The world record for hot dog eating is 76. Let's just hope the person who broke it was okay after eating them. Anyway, back to our delicious hot dog egg crepes. Well, if you have a better name for these, don't hesitate to let me know in the comments. From the looks of it, that avocado needs a bit more time to ripen up. But since it's going into the blender, that shouldn't be a big problem. I suggest you blend that for a couple of minutes to achieve a smooth paste with no clumps. I assume that's cream cheese. Who needs a dipping bowl, am I right? Great for Super Bowl season. You won't need to do the dishes after having guests over. I prefer my popcorn with melted butter. Well, that goes for corn on the cob, too. I can already tell this is going to taste amazing. Hey, they should start selling these in movie theaters as well. This will not be one of your regular fried potatoes, people. Trust me. I know you have the urge to cut small cubes, but make sure to keep the potato in one piece. Otherwise, this won't work. Have you ever heard that Cleopatra supposedly took milk baths to keep her skin looking young and healthy? Well, don't get me wrong, these milk ice cubes are not for that. That's one way to cool down coffee. Somebody's making a real mess in the kitchen. Why not put the whole bag in the water? It'll be much safer and cleaner. That's one sharp knife you got there. But here's another way you can use it. Looks like you're gonna have to get your hands dirty. And in some cases, touching raw meat with your bare hands may not be a good idea. That's where this cold water hat comes in handy, pun intended. Sometimes you might not have the time to make dough. In those cases, using bread would work perfectly fine to prepare delicious snacks. You know what? This is not fair. I can't continue my diet plan anymore, especially after learning about incredible recipes like this one. That may look like a plastic sheet, but it's actually rice paper, so very much edible. These chips could be a healthier alternative for your kid's lunch bag. Trust me, there's no way they won't like how these taste. This next quick recipe is going to bring a whole other level to frozen yogurt. We're adding berries here, but feel free to pick any fruit you want. I call these frozen yogurt crackers. Do you have a milk frother at home? If your answer is yes, then great, because that's all you need to prepare instant banana milk for yourself. Yep, you don't even need a glass. You can put them in an ice bowl to keep your drink cold and fresh. Are we making chocolate crepes? Count me invested. By the way, any type of chocolate bar will work for this. The trick here is to have enough oil in the pan as well as to heat it beforehand. Add some powdered sugar on top to make it look like it's out of the hands of a Michelin star chef. This is the stuff that dreams are made of. Something sweet? Check. Now it's time for another savory recipe. You can use both mashed or grated potatoes to make this one. The choice is up to you. Just make sure they're freshly prepared. Add a cup of flour and an egg. Then cook the mixture until it's golden brown. Your potato waffles are ready to be served. You park your car in a dark alley, 
lock it, and leave it for just a couple of minutes to go grab a coffee. When you come back, your beloved vehicle is no longer there. A siren sounds. Oh wait, that was the alarm. Phew. Luckily, that was all just a dream, and you can help it to never come true. First of all, you can install a steering wheel lock in your car. It can either be a long metal rod stretched over the steering wheel or a chain lock connected to the seatbelt buckle. Both options are good to slow down the bad guys that might break into your vehicle. But don't make it 100% thief proof. The thieves can just cut the steering wheel or even the lock, so you need to add some extra layers of protection to be sure. Criminals like to use gadgets that catch signals and help them steal cars without a key. For example, if the car is parked in a garage of a private house or under the windows of a multi-story building, the keys are accessible through the radio device. Thieves can easily intercept the signal and the owners of the car won't notice anything. To protect your keys from relay attacks when they're stored at home, use something metallic. You can simply wrap the keys in foil to block the radio signals or keep them in a safe metal box. Park in areas that are well lit and have security cameras. Building entrances and parking lots are your best choice. An isolated garage isn't always the best idea because it could put you personally at risk. So if you do park in one of those, stay close to the attendant or where security cameras can see you. Keep the wheels turned towards the curb whenever you park. It will make it way harder for thieves to try to tow the auto with a tow truck. To steal a car, a criminal will have to make some extra maneuvers. It takes time and effort and can demotivate the bad guys. In many cases, it's not your car the bad guys are after. It's that shiny new laptop you dropped in the front seat or your designer purse that looks like it's stuffed with valuables. Things like that are hard to resist and often lead to a break-in. So take an extra moment to hide your belongings in the trunk and your vehicle will be less tempting for criminals. Don't just jump out of the car, even if it's literally for a moment to buy something. If you need to get out, always stop the engine first, close the windows, and lock the doors. Storing your vehicle registration in the car is a good way to make the lives of thieves easier. They can present it to police officers in case they get pulled over. Your insurance information and VIN can help them get new keys to unlock the car no problem. If you aren't the only person using the car, find some secret place to hide the registration and only tell the people you trust 100% about it. You can also take a photo of your title registration and insurance information and store them on your smartphone. Another option is to make copies of those important docs and keep them with you. Mark your windshields, windows, and mirrors with a VIN number, which is the identification number of the vehicle. This service won't cost you a lot, but will demotivate the bad guys. They'll have to spend money to change the marked glass, and they will think twice if they want to invest in your vehicle. You can also play spy and leave marks on different parts of the car with an invisible pen or cover it in micro dots with your ID details. This won't stop thieves, but it will make it easier to track the vehicle if it gets stolen. If you know that you'll have to leave the car somewhere new and you don't feel like it's a safe place, hide an old switched on phone or tablet in it. Make sure you have a way to track it. Then, the Find My Phone feature will help you locate the phone and the car in a matter of seconds. You can either get a cheap data plan for real-time tracking or rely on GPS. It should work even without a SIM card. Protect your side mirrors from thieves with special covers. You can find models that come with locks made from anti-cut materials. The cover will also protect your side mirrors from scratches and scruffs and extend their lifespan. Plus, you can go creative and choose covers with your favorite team's logo or something else that's important to you. Not a bad idea to customize your vehicle on a budget, right? Car thieves use different schemes to distract your attention. A piece of paper stuck to the rear view window, a plastic bottle over the wheel, or a shirt on the trunk of your car. These and other small things will likely get you out of the car. The bad guys can also pretend to be nice and helpful 
and to tell you to pull over because there's something under your car. The idea here is, again, to get you out of your car and let them steal it. So instead of going out, close the windows, lock the car doors, and don't go out if there's someone suspicious hanging around. Criminals aren't the only bad guys who can do your vehicle harm. Harsh winter weather can be a problem too. If you don't want to find your wipers stuck to the windshield and scrape them off every morning, leave them up when you're not driving. You probably heard it's a bad idea because it ruins the arm spring and can tempt someone to steal your wipers. Don't worry, the springs don't lose their elasticity and there aren't really many people who are after your wiper blades. In case you forget to put the wipers up and find them safely stuck to your windshield, try running the AC. Cold air will defrost the windows just like warm air. It works by dehumidifying the air. If your lock is frozen and you can't get inside your own car, treat it with some hand sanitizer. That substance can melt the ice without a problem. To prevent your windshield from getting frosty, mix three parts vinegar and one part water and spray that solution on the windows overnight. It'll save you some scraping time in the morning. Always keep your gas tank more than half full in cold weather. Moist air will be happy to fill any empty space above the fuel in your tank. And that air will condense to water in the cold. Water is denser than gasoline, so it settles at the bottom of your tank. When enough of it accumulates, it'll go through the fuel line to the engine, and that's not really good. To protect your favorite car from rust, wash your vehicle regularly. Something as simple as that can be the difference because dirt damages the protective layer of clear coat and paint and makes it easier for rust to sneak in. Don't forget to wash the undercarriage of the car and the wheel wells. Make sure the car paint isn't chipping or peeling. You need that layer to protect your vehicle from the elements. In the cold season, salt from the road can also cause some rust spots. To avoid that, you should at least rinse the car every week, even in the winter. And don't forget to wax it at least twice a year. That's another good way to keep your paint looking good as new and protect it from UV rays. One more thing is to keep the inside of the car clean. If you spill something inside, always mop up the liquid. You don't want it to seep further and hit the metal parts. This is exactly how rust forms. Okay, did you know that people waste around 17 hours of a 45-hour working week? It's two whole working days wasted, or a whole week in a month, or three months out of a year. Imagine if we could get this time back. Then we must learn how to stop doing this. Meet Leah. She's 28 years old, and today we will help her to be more productive. The first thing Leah should do is to listen to her body, try to work together, and take advantage of it. You probably know that some people are early birds and others are night owls. So Leah needs to figure out which one she is. Is she more active in the morning or in the evening? Now that she figured it out, she needs to plan her sleeping schedule properly, accounting for her needs but also for commitments like office hours. Leah has a lot of freedom here. She lives alone and works remotely. But she does have a meeting every workday at 11, and she watches her niece for an hour after school. So she has to be awake at those times. Happily, she's an early bird. Consistency is very important for the sleeping schedule. So once she figures it out, she needs to stick to it. After weeks of trying different things, Leah realized that she needs 7.5 hours of sleep. So she goes to bed at 11.15 p.m., it takes her about 15 minutes to fall asleep, and she wakes up at 6 a.m. The next thing Leah needs is a constant and energy-boosting morning routine. This way, she won't waste time and energy thinking if she should shower or if she wants to brush her teeth before or after you eat, or if she wants to eat sandwiches or eggs for breakfast. It's nice to add some energy-boosting activities, like a workout or a little walk. Also, it's good to avoid your smartphone during the first hour of the day. 
Morning is done, but there's a whole working day ahead. There are a couple of rules Leah needs to know. First, to-do lists are important. The problem is that our to-do lists are never-ending. Good news! We don't have to do every single thing on that list. Have you ever heard of the 80-20 rule? It states that 20% of our tasks give us 80% of the result. The other 80% of the tasks only give us an additional 20% of the outcome. Bottom line? 80% of our tasks are close to useless. So what Leah needs to do is to look at her to-do list and identify the 20% of the most important tasks and start with them right away. But what should she start with? She should eat a live frog. No, not this kind of frog. The frog is the most important and most likely the most difficult task on the to-do list. It's the task that will have the most positive impact on Leah's career, and it's probably the one she is more likely to procrastinate on. So, she should identify the frog and eat it. Meaning, do that task right away. Completions of the hardest tasks give us the most satisfaction. But frogs are frogs because they're the hardest and the ones we typically procrastinate on. I'm willing to bet that at least 15 of those 17 hours we lose, we procrastinate on the big and most important task. The reason we procrastinate is that it seems too big, too long, or too scary. So here's how Leah should approach any hard task. To break it into smaller tasks and then do them one by one. Ideally, each one of these tasks should take no longer than 20 minutes. Leah's most important task for the day is to finish her work project. So that's what she needs to break into parts. But wait, before Leah starts, we need to check the other tasks and try to distribute them throughout the day effectively. Leah should track the time frames when she's most productive and when her brain works best. Pinpoint the opposite, times when she gets exhausted or times when she normally gets distracted by other commitments in her life. Here's a list of all the typical tasks she does every day, and now she just needs to assign them to the time slots. Leah's most important task every day is to work on her project, so she obviously should avoid doing it at 1pm, when her niece comes to stay with her for an hour after school. Leah can get easily distracted, so she should better schedule checking emails during this time slot. The best idea is to schedule the most important task during her most productive hours. Her most productive hours are from 7 a.m. to 10 a.m., so she needs to start with it first thing in the morning and do the hardest tasks during that time. Leah's brain stops working as efficiently around 4 p.m., so that's a good time to do notorious work like editing the variables and putting the tables together. Drafting a day like this will give her a productive structure she can work around. Now it's time to start working. Here are a few tips for Leah on how to do it efficiently. First, group similar tasks so you can do them one after another while staying in the right mindset. Second, eliminate everything distracting. Put the phone on do not disturb mode, use website blockers, and don't check email. In fact, set two time slots every day to check emails and never do it when it's not the time. If something comes to your mind, like a thought or another thing you realized you need to do, don't jump to do it. Just write it down and go back to the main task. Always keep a notebook to capture thoughts and ideas, because they don't always come back. Let go of perfectionism. It's unnecessary and only adds stress and pressure. The next truth is that you can't be productive without taking breaks. We're not robots to sit down and work for 9 hours straight without any breaks. That's actually another reason why you procrastinate. There are many strategies, and you should find what works best for you. Some people focus for 25 minutes and take a 5-minute break after. Some do it 50-10. Some work for 90 minutes with a 15-minute break. Try each and see what works best for you. But don't go more than 90 minutes at once without a break. You'll start losing your focus, and it'll be hard to make up for it. Instead of a 15-minute break, You will need one hour or will even procrastinate for the rest of your day. We don't want that. Try to take effective breaks, though. The breaks must give you energy instead of taking it away. Scrolling through social media isn't a good kind of break because it makes your attention scattered. The best one is probably to go outside for a short walk, but you can also make yourself a cup of tea or have a chat with a colleague. If you decide to take a power nap, schedule a 25-minute nap, 
5 to fall asleep, and 20 for the actual nap. Don't take a nap longer than that because you'll enter a sleeping phase that will only make you groggy when you wake up. But also, don't stress about not being able to fall asleep within 5 minutes. As long as you're laying those 25 minutes with your eyes closed, your brain gets that needed rest. Here's a list of nice break activities for you. Go outside. Do a little stretch. Lie down and close your eyes. Make a drink. Eat a healthy snack. Take a call. Breathing exercise or meditation. Tidy up your room. Read a book. Doodle. I like that one. That's it. The working day is over. Remember that the evening routine is important to detach from work and start resting. Take a shower, eat dinner, and read. And don't forget to plan for the next day. This way, you'll be able to start your day right away without losing any time to figure it out. Good luck! Here's how you can protect your bank card from potential fraudsters. Use a marker and cover the last four digits. You can also use a sticker that's easy to remove and place it over the security code. Have you had a house guest that didn't use a coaster? Get a hairdryer and hold it a couple of inches away from the stain. Blow it on medium heat for a couple of minutes to evaporate the watermark. If a faded ring remains, mix equal amounts of vinegar and olive oil in a bowl. Wipe it onto the marked area and rub it in until the stain disappears. Then wipe it off. Don't waste time scrubbing the burnt stains off the bottom of a pan. Instead, fill it with water and add 3 tablespoons of salt. Let it sit overnight as the salt dissolves the burnt marks. And in the morning, pour the water out of the pan. This way, it will be much easier to scrub all that grease off. Picture this. You're on vacation and your shirt has become all crinkled inside the luggage. You need it tonight, but the hotel doesn't have an iron. Don't panic. Hang the shirt up in the bathroom. And while you relax in a hot shower, the heat and moisture will unwrinkle your shirt. It won't be perfect, but it will get much better without any effort. The football is on and it turns out you've run out of standard batteries. You can use a smaller battery instead that easily fits inside. Now take some aluminum foil and crunch it up. Fit it into the gap on the negative or flat end of the battery. All done! You can turn on the TV now. Once your flip-flops crack and the plug easily slips out of the hole, it's normally a sign that you need a new pair, but there's a way to extend their mileage. Push the plug back through the hole, then take a bread clip and attach it to the end. The clip will provide enough support for the plug to remain in place. You've received a package and the receipt is taped on. You've managed to detach it from the box. But how to separate the tape without ripping the paper? Hold both ends of the tape apart and by pulling it slowly, the tape stretches and separates itself from the paper without tearing it apart. Ziploc bags are perfect to keep things dry, but it would be great if they were larger. Take two and turn one of them inside out. They can now connect and work as one large bag, big enough to protect a keyboard. There's no need to carry your keys in your hand when you go for a jog. Instead, put them inside your pocket, take a rubber band, then tie it around the pocket from the inside. This stops the keys from falling out. You've broken your key in the door. It's stuck. Great! Arranging for a locksmith could cost up to $100, but for a cheaper and quicker option, try using a hot glue stick. Heat the end with a lighter, and once it's warm enough to melt, push the glue into the keyhole. The melted glue will enter the available space covering part of the key. Once it cools, it compresses and gains a strong hold of the key's end. Now, just pull it out. If you need to siphon liquid through a hose and want to avoid using your mouth, put one end in the liquid and hold the other upwards with your thumb closing the top. Now shake up and down. This jiggle motion pushes liquid upwards a little each time. And once it reaches the top, lower the exit point and let gravity do the rest. You've left your keys locked inside the car. It's an older model with a roll-down window. You could get the coat hanger and begin the long process of finding the lock. Or use duct tape. Make about 20 two-foot-long strands. Stick them onto the window, allowing enough room for the tape to grab onto at the bottom. Then with a friend, take the ends of the tape, holding them together, and pull downwards. The force will allow the window to lower enough that you can unlock the door. While drilling long screws into hardwood, your old drill might not have enough power, leaving them only halfway in. 
Before the drill gives up, get a block of wax and scrape the edges of the screws with it. The wax works like a lubricant, melting as it gets warm and providing easy entry for the screw. You're out camping, but you didn't bring anything to light the barbecue. Take a small plastic bag that won't leak, fill it up with water and close it tight, making a round bubble. Hold it over where you want to catch the light from the sun. The bag of water will work like a magnifying glass, starting up the barbecue, just as long as it's a sunny day. Missing a corkscrew or a cork breaking halfway? By using a stove lighter, heat the top of the bottle. The heat slightly expands the glass, and this forces the cork out the top. You've super glued your fingers again. Take some salt and pour it on top of your stuck fingers. Put your fingers into the water and slowly rub. The mixture will dissolve the glue and release you in no time. While hanging up a painting, it can be impossible to find that stubborn nail. Place a fork upside down and insert it so the nail is in between the middle fork teeth. The fork has provided a long arm that's separated from the wall, making it easier to slip the string of the painting over the nail. Once it's perfectly balanced, simply remove the fork. You need to put a cake into a container, but taking it out again later by lifting it up from the inside might ruin the cake. Put the lid upside down and place the cake on the lid. The base of the container is now the lid, making it much easier to access slice by slice. Pour out water more efficiently from large jugs and bottles by swirling. This will make the liquid inside spin, creating a vortex. The vortex allows for the air to flow back into the bottle as the water pours out, much faster than the glugging alternative. There's an easier and less messy way to remove eggshells from a boiled egg. Once fully boiled, crack the shell on both ends by tapping them. On one end, pinch off the shell. Use the opened end to blow with your mouth. The force of air will push the flesh and expand the eggshell, forcing out the egg undamaged. When the hinges of your laptop break, repairing them can cost up to $300. A far cheaper fix is to buy a picture frame and tape it to the back of the screen. You've dropped a small piece of jewelry on the floor, seemingly impossible to find. Take a stocking and place it over the end of the vacuum hose. Give the area a good vacuum and check the end periodically. You will eventually find it sitting at the end. You've drilled a hole in the wall, but the drill hole is now too wide. Remove the screw and find an object that is slightly shorter and thinner. Pieces of plastic, small wires, paper clips, or even toothpicks are perfect. Place whichever item you find inside the hole. It's filled the gap enough so the screw will now re-enter securely. Taking the trash out can put you in a gross scenario of getting bin juice on you. A great way to avoid this is by placing old papers at the bottom of the bag. Now, not only does it absorb all the liquids from the food and other sources, but also helps prevent bad smells from forming within a bin. Nobody likes mosquitoes, and pesticides are pricey. A cheap alternative is to take a plastic bottle and cut the top part off from the bottom of the funnel. After removing it, turn it upside down and put it inside the bottle. Mix two cups of warm water with two tablespoons of sugar. The mosquitoes will be attracted to the formula inside and become trapped. Now just sit back and relax without getting bitten. Road trip! You and your best friends are rushing down the highway. Suddenly, one turns off the AC and puts the windows down. No! They wanted to help you cut some gas costs and just made one of the classic mistakes. Turning off the AC and opting for a natural breeze helps while you're stuck in traffic. While you're driving with your windows down on a highway, you're creating unnecessary wind resistance. Your car now needs more energy to move forward, and you end up burning more fuel per ride. While you're struggling through traffic inside the city limits, though, turning off the AC isn't a bad idea. It might not be the most comfortable ride on a hot day, but you're here to save some money, right? Now, a quick common sense test. You have two routes to choose from. One is shorter and another looks longer on the map. What's it gonna be? Common sense is screaming. The first one, duh. But in fact, the shortest route isn't always the best choice in terms of gas usage. You gotta pick the one with the least stop signs, traffic lights, and traffic jams. This route will require less speeding up and slowing down, both major gas eaters. So plan your route wisely. 
you can consult apps that show real-time traffic data or interactive maps with stoplights. Do you also have a bag of sand, your old inflatable bed, a pair of shoes, and five water canisters in your trunk? Or is it just me? Well, you gotta declutter if you want to save some cash. Losing 100 pounds that you carry around in your vehicle will decrease your gas usage by up to 1% per gallon relative to your vehicle's weight. More weight means more fuel used. That's some simple traffic math. Brake and accelerate less. Driving at a steady speed above 50 miles per hour helps you save some gas costs. Every time you hit the brakes or take off at a rocket speed at the stoplights, you're making your engine work hard, and it feeds on fuel, you know. Plus, aggressive driving is bad traffic etiquette, so speed up slowly and coast to a braking stop smoothly. Don't go 0 to 60 or floor the car until you have to brake abruptly. Cruise control can help you with that drive calmly and steadily when you're on flat terrain like the highway. Once you approach some hills or mountains, cruise control will make your car eat too much gas for no good reason. So turn it off and let the speed go down a bit as you ascend. And then slowly speed up as you go down. This will take some workload off your engine. Park your vehicle a couple of blocks away from your destination. The next time you make the seventh trip driving around the block searching for a parking spot, it will make all perfect sense. When you sum up the frustration, your time spent on those searches, and of course, extra gas costs, you'll be okay settling somewhat further from a busy shopping area, business center, or your favorite popular restaurant. Don't wait until the last minute to refill your tank. Make it a habit to do it once it's three quarters empty, or whenever is more comfortable for you. This way, you won't have to frantically stop at the gas station nearest to you when it's time to refill. Instead, you'll have your time for some research. There are special gas-finding apps to help you find the best deal in your area. Sometimes, it can be across the state or region border, and it's never ever by the highway. Once you're ready to settle down with one gas brand, don't hesitate to ask for something in return. Sign up for their loyalty program, save an app, get a card, whatever it takes to get a discount, cash back, extra points, and other perks from them. Some grocery stores partner up with gas chains, letting you use the points you earn at the store to get a discount on gas. Even 5 cents per gallon can make a difference, so inquire about those. Hybrid vehicle owners, this one's for you. Try turning on the AC while your car is still plugged into the charger. It will help extend the vehicle's range when you get on the road, which means less money spent on gas. If you're driving one of the newer model cars, your engine must automatically stop when you idle your car. If that's not your case, avoid idling to save fuel. Waiting for the traffic lights to turn green takes 45 to 120 seconds. And starting your car requires only 10 seconds of gas. So, if you have to stop for more than 10 seconds, turn your vehicle off. If you let it run, it can eat up to an extra half a gallon of fuel per hour. Now, in case safety isn't one of your primary concerns, at least take good care of your car for reasons of economy. Check if your tires are well inflated at least once a month. When underinflated, they wear out quicker, drag, and waste gas. Check your car's manual to see how often you should tune up your engine. It depends on the age and model. Clean the filters to keep the car going while eating less gas. Use the right motor oil. Otherwise, your car will have to work harder than it should and waste gas. There's no need to play it cool and fill up with premium fuel unless you have a high-performance engine that really can't run on anything else. That will cost you much less in the long run and won't make your vehicle go faster, cleaner, or get better mileage. If your car's manual recommends but does not require premium, at least go with lower grades for extra savings. Gas chemistry has advanced over the past decades, so don't worry about the quality of regular gas. It's all good. If you have an older car, check out your gas cap seal. Once it weakens, it lets oxygen leak into the gas tank. When that happens, gas burns way faster. You can replace the gas cap, but be prepared that the sensors might not recognize the new one, unless it comes from the manufacturer or authorized supplier. If you have a manual transmission, you're in luck. You have complete control over your RPM. 
that's revolutions per minute. Lower gas means higher RPM. The higher the RPM, the more torque the engine produces and the more fuel it's using. So shift into the upper gears quickly. It differs from car to car, but an optimal solution would be to change to second by about 15 miles per hour. And move to top gear by the time you're going at 30 to 35 miles per hour. That cargo container and the bike rack you have on the roof of your vehicle will have to go. They increase your car's wind resistance, so the engine must do more work to maintain the speed. It could mean up to 20% extra fuel consumption on the highway and up to 8% in the city. If you do need that extra storage, opt for rear-mounted cargo boxes. For those in car buying mode right now, look into a hybrid electric, plug-in hybrid electric, or all-electric one. I mean, you'll definitely cut gas costs with an electric car. Suppose you aren't ready for that much of a change. In that case, many popular models actually come in hybrid form. Toyota RAV4, Hyundai Sonata, and Volvo XC90 are all yours to go. And here comes the bonus tip that will help you cut driving costs by 100%. Are you ready for it? Don't drive! Okay, okay, let me explain. Don't drive whenever it's possible. Walk or bike to work or use public transport. If that's too much for you, at least swap driving responsibilities and gas costs with colleagues living in your area. Do you know any other tips to save gas? Maybe you have personal favorites. Do let me know in the comments below. Hey buddy, looks like you had some fun in the great outdoors. As adorable as those paw prints look, your mama still needs to clean them. Spreading soda over the carpet and then vacuuming it works like magic for such cases. Artistic people can be messy sometimes. No judgment here, I know it's all part of the creative process. But this hack will actually help save time from cleaning only to paint more. I think that's more than enough laundry detergent. Yep, she agrees with me. There's a way to make sure he uses the right amount next time. Just put the ice tray in the freezer and you'll have yourself jelly detergent cubes. Hey, this'll save you money too, you know. Cleaning your brushes is such a bore. It's definitely something that tests one's patience. This shaving foam hack will save you a lot of time. I feel like that amount of hair will clog the sink though. Remember what parents always say, wash your hands before eating something. But looks like that's not an easy task with those melted soap bars. A couple of rubber bands will help you save your soap. It won't be touching water all the time and therefore it'll last longer. Oh man, I hate it when bottles get all dirty inside. If you're not Mr. Fantastic with the ability to stretch your body into any shape, then this looks like an impossible task. Hey, wait, maybe I was looking at it the wrong way. Magneto's powers will work perfectly fine here. I feel like you'll need a stronger magnet, however. Wow, this bottle looks brand new now. Don't you just hate that cooking and cleaning takes forever, but eating the dish you made takes like 15 minutes? Guess that guy leaves all the hard work to the lady. Don't worry, miss. There's a way you can avoid this disaster. Just cover the surfaces with stretch film, and that's it. Now you don't need to get anxious about all the cleaning you'll have to do later. Hope this won't cause you to be late for your work. Because how are you going to explain this to your boss? You can't just say, I had to wait for the stinky odor to go away. It's always a real struggle to get the corners, am I right? But it's nothing a couple of straws can't fix. No dust left behind is the motto. You can firmly clean all the nooks and crannies that the regular vacuum head can't get to. If you're a jar collector like I am, then you already got everything you'll need for this hack. This is what being smart looks like, everyone.
By the way, looks like you've been postponing doing the dishes for a while now, huh? Don't worry, no judgments. We've all been there. Those toothbrushes were basically swimming in there. But the glass filling up with water is inevitable, really. However, Orbeez balls can make the process a lot slower. Somebody needs to replace the paper towel. But don't head to the store just yet. I suggest you ditch paper towels altogether and go for this reusable option. You'll be saving a lot of bucks. Thank me later. Whoa, have you been collecting dirty makeup sponges or what? Don't use them until they're all clean. Otherwise, I'm pretty sure they'll give you pimples. Looks like this is gonna take a while. But the satisfaction you'll get once you see them all clean will be worth it. These kind of look like Easter eggs to me. By the way, do you really need that many sponges to do your makeup? It's all fun and games until someone spills all the glitter on the floor. Worry not, we got you. Hey, good to see you recycling. No, you don't need a bigger bin, trust me. All you need is to know this one hack. And let's get this one thing straight. I know this is science, but it sure feels like magic. Honey, I shrunk the trash. Look at the difference here. It's a relief to see you don't have a pile of dirty dishes like the lady before. But how are you going to explain that sink? Seems like you've been ignoring it for quite some time now. That's why you need something strong to scrub there. But I have a better solution, one that won't tire you. Just apply a coat of dish soap and soda mixture all around the sink and wait. I wouldn't believe how it works wonders if I didn't see it with my own eyes. You're gonna hurt your back and knees cleaning like this. You know, robot vacuum cleaners don't need coffee breaks, right? So put that thing to work. In the meantime, you can just relax and maybe even start reading the book you bought six months ago. No matter how many times you clean the stove, it always gets dirty at the end of the day, right? Well, not anymore. Hey, I think I'm gonna give this a try using glitter glue. It'll help make things more fun. You should have bought a trash bin with a lid to avoid the awful stench, you know? Although this hack won't make the trash smell good or anything, it will at least help keep your bin fresh and nice. I know this is not a food hacks video, but that doesn't stop me from wanting some snacks now. Even if you're too old to play with slimes, it might be a good idea to keep one at home for stuff like this. If I were you, I would still disinfect that with antibacterial wipes or something, just in case. Hey, it's her turn to pick the movie now. Uh-oh, someone's forgotten to add laundry powder to the shopping list. That's okay, you can still make your own with everyday things such as baking soda and a soap bar. This lady is one of the lucky ones because she has a dishwasher. Placing a piece of lemon, even one that's been juiced, will help freshen the load and leave your dishes looking shinier. This is why I never wear white socks if I'm going to visit someone else's house because I don't really want to see how dirty their floors might be, you know? Using bleach for situations like this may help, but it might also ruin your garments. That's why this hack is the better option to make white clothes look great again. You might want to clean the microwave after you're done, though. This phone case looks like it's been through some tough stuff. Let's give it the second chance it deserves. All you need to do is apply WD-40 spray, pour some soda, and rinse it out. By the way, if you have sensitive skin, you might want to wear protective gloves to avoid irritation. Better safe than sorry. Cleaning stubborn stains on a glass stovetop can be tricky. 
there's always the risk of causing scratches on the surface. That's why any type of scrubbing or scraping action is not advised. Did you know that according to one poll, an average person spends more than six days a year washing dishes? Then there's all the other cleaning stuff that needs to be done. But knowing the right hacks will save you a lot of time and make your life so much easier. Wow, your shoes are definitely cleaner than this house. Who knew shoelaces would work like a charm when it comes to getting rid of all the dust and rust? Is it time to go to bed yet or are you tired of all the work you've done around the house? I was being sarcastic, your partner did all the work. So saving her toothbrush is the least you can do. Don't have time to work out? Hitting the gym, but it's still looking like you don't even lift? Tip number one, dress using your brain. Avoid excessively baggy clothing. You've worked so hard for those gains, you wanna show them off. The ultimate cheat to looking bigger is getting a tight shirt. Switch to muscle fit tees or a size that's slightly too small. Your arms will fill out the shirt sleeves giving the illusion that you're more buff than you actually are. Tapered shirts, jackets, and well-fitting tops are your friends. Go for the black tee too. The black color takes away from the light which falls on your belly. It also highlights the muscles super well, making you look way more ripped. I won't tell if you don't. You can also use your clothes to bulk up. Layering is your friend and can help you look like Hercules in no time. Try throwing on a bomber jacket or a puffer. If you reckon that those are too thick, even a leather or denim jacket can make all the difference. They'll still add that extra bit of thickness, making you appear as though you have more mass. When you're out shopping, look for clothes that are going to enhance your shoulders and make your waist look smaller. This will make your body look like a V-shape, which is the goal of most gym goers. Finally, when it comes to clothing, horizontal stripes are, for once, your pal. They trick the eyes into making the body look wider. This makes your shoulders appear broader and gives the impression that you're way beefier than you actually are. Tip number two, having good posture is key to looking big. Bringing your shoulders back will push out your chest and properly show off those muscles. It's also going to make your stomach look way flatter and bring out the traps too. Slouching in your chair, leaning on one leg when you stand, and having a hunched back from texting are common causes of bad posture. If you struggle with this, try out a posture corrector brace. They're cheap and can easily slide on under your clothes. They'll put your shoulders back and no one will be able to tell you're wearing one. Yoga is also great for helping posture. It can be super easy to pick up and there's a ton of handy YouTube tutorials to get you started. Child's Pose is a classic yoga move that can make a big difference to your posture. Start on your hands and knees with your knees shoulder width apart. Your big toes should be touching each other. Crawl forward on your hands and extend your arms straight out towards the front of the mat. Drop your hips back to your heels and bring your head down too. Take five to 10 deep breaths and release. Try doing this for a total of 10 minutes a day. You can split it up into smaller sections and you'll be sure to see results. Tip number three, it's best to focus on getting lean rather than shredded. Shredded guys often look skinny. It can be super difficult to fill out a shirt. This isn't necessarily a bad thing, but in our case, that's not what we're going for. You ideally want to have a body fat percentage between 10 and 15%. This is going to make you look fuller and way more muscular. Any less and you might appear skinny. Any more and you're going to start losing that muscle definition you worked so hard for. Tip number four, carbs are your friends. Losing body fat to get lean isn't going to help you fill out those shirt sleeves. Extra carbs will help you when you train in the gym too. Adding high carb days to your weekly meal plans won't just help you look bigger for the next few days, but also help you maintain your strength during a fat loss phase. Your muscles will look fuller and you're going to be able to perform better with those intense workout sessions. Oh, and your pump will look insane. Tip number five, exercise smartly. If you're a regular gym goer, you need to focus on your shoulders. Broad shoulders are the number one thing that will make you look bigger and trick the eyes. Stand a shredded guy with narrow shoulders next to a guy with an average body but big shoulders. 
the guy with the wider shoulders will look bigger Ouch. and appear more like he's muscular, especially when he slides a shirt on. Here's the best three workouts to grow those shoulders. Number one, the dumbbell shoulder press. In a standing position, hold the dumbbells by your shoulders with your palms facing forwards. Your elbows need to be out to the sides and bent at a 90 degree angle. Make sure not to lean back, then extend through your elbows to push the dumbbells over your head. Dumbbells are way better to use than a barbell as they make sure that either side is growing equally strong. With a barbell, it's super easy to fall into the habit of relying on one shoulder to push the weight up. Start with one set of 8 to 10 reps. Number 2. The Lateral Raise Stand or sit with a dumbbell in either hand. Keeping your back straight, brace your core. Slowly lift the weights out to your sides until your arms are parallel to the floor. Then simply lower them back down again in a controlled way. Aim for 10 to 12 reps with this one. Number 3. The Reverse Fly For this one, you'll need to stand with your feet shoulder width apart. Hold a dumbbell at either side, allowing your hands to hang straight down. Your palms should be facing each other. Maintain a tight core and straighten your back, then exhale. Raise both arms out to your sides. Your shoulder blades should squeeze together towards your spine. Then inhale and bring the weights back down to your starting position. For each set, do between 8 to 12 reps. Add these three exercises into your training and watch your shoulders grow. These exercises are also perfect for getting an amazing pump like we talked about earlier. Add in some push-ups too, and you'll get a pump like no other. Speaking of pumps, they're always going to make you look bigger. We've all seen bodybuilders pump up before a show to make them look more muscular than they actually are. The main goal of a pump is to draw as much blood into your muscles as possible. The best way to do this is with high rep training. Try doing reps of 15 or more with slightly smaller weights than usual. If you carry on using heavy weights, you're just going to tire yourself out and may end up hurting yourself due to sloppy form. Training your back is also just as important as building those shoulders. You're going to want to blast that upper back, so put your bench press and bicep curls on the back burner for now. Instead, focus on these three things. Number 1. Chin-ups. All you need is a pull-up bar. Take an underhand grip and put your hands shoulder width apart. Straighten your arms, bend your knees and cross your lower legs. Keeping your core stable, simply pull yourself up until your chin becomes aligned with the bar. It's best to pause for a couple of seconds once you reach the top. Number 2. Bent over rows. Load up your barbell and stand with your feet shoulder width apart. Bend your knees and lean forward from your waist. Brace your core and squeeze your shoulders together. Bring the barbell up until it reaches your sternum, then slowly lower it back down. Use a lighter weight and go for sets of 8 to 10 reps. Number 3. T-Raises Pick up a pair of lightweight dumbbells and stand with your feet hip width apart. Bend your knees slightly, move your hips back and lower your torso until it's parallel to the floor. Bring the weights together and turn your palms so that they're facing forward. Keeping those arms straight, lift the weights up to shoulder height, then lower them back down. Try this for 15 reps. It's super important to keep your core and glutes engaged the entire time. The great thing about these workouts is that you don't need to head down to the gym. You can stay safe and build your shape from the comfort of your own home. You can turn ordinary matches into waterproof ones. Apply a thin coat of nail polish to the matches and let it dry. Once they're ready, they'll stay dry enough to start a fire even if you drop the matches in the water. If you get lost somewhere during the winter and need a drink, then don't eat snow. It has much more air than water, so you won't even feel much more hydrated. Your body also wastes a lot of energy trying to eat it. Even worse, you might lower your body temperature and could even get sick. If you find yourself face-to-face -face with a coyote or a wolf, don't turn your back. Slowly retreat while facing the animal. This might only work for a single animal, though. If you meet a pack, then the most important thing is to make sure that they don't surround you. Back away towards a tree and press your back against it. Then choose the right moment and climb it as quickly as possible. Several layers of clothing will warm you better than one warm fur coat or down jacket. 
air will be trapped between the clothing layers, insulating you and keeping your body warm. If you get lost in the woods, always try to sleep a little above the ground. You can lay on a layer of branches and leaves as a makeshift bed, or stretch a hammock out between some trees. At night, the temperature drops and the ground becomes cold. Even if you build a fire, it could go out while you sleep, and the ground will be sapping your body heat. You're in a boat in the middle of the sea, no food, no fishing net, and you're hungry. It was supposed to be only a 3-hour tour. Well, guess what? You can catch fish with the help of shoelaces and any object – phone, watch, or keys. The shadow cast by the boat in the sea can attract fish, and a reflective object can work as bait. Tie your keys to your shoelaces and use them as a fishing rod. Even if a fish doesn't bite, activities like this are a good way to maintain a healthy mind on the open sea. A short meditation can save you from a panic attack. You need to focus on your breathing and try to slow it down. Your brain will quickly calm down and turn its focus away from the panic. Oxygen masks in airplanes work on the same principle. When you control your breathing, your attention is redirected away from whatever bad thing is happening. You can make a torch out of a log. Put a small log vertically, make a deep star-shaped cut on the top, put dry grass leaves and sticks inside. Once you're done, set fire to the log and watch it burn for up to 3 hours. This should work the same regardless of the size and type of wood. Now, if you meet an angry grizzly bear, never try to run away because the bear can easily outrun you. Instead, lie down and don't move. Grizzlies only usually attack when they see a threat, so they'll often leave you alone if you show them that you won't cause them any problems. This only works with grizzly bears, though. If a confrontation is unavoidable, back away slowly and use bear spray. If you don't have any, pepper spray will work similarly and should disorient the bear and scare it away. Or not. Don't eat berries or mushrooms in the forest if you don't know exactly what they are. They could be poisonous. If you have no other option, eat the inner bark of maples, birches, and pines to fill your stomach. Use a knife to cut away the rough outer bark and get to the softer white stuff. You can boil it to make it even softer, or cook it over an open fire to make a crunchy snack. And if you're really starving, you can look for ants. They might not be the most appetizing, but they're pretty nutritious. If you don't have a watch, you can use your fingers to find out how much time is left until sunset. Raise your hand so the inside of your palm is facing you. Your fingers should be between the sun and the horizon line. See how many fingers can fit in this space. The thickness of one finger equals about 15 minutes, so you can calculate the time left before sunset. If you're lost and need to build a fire to attract attention, throw in a lot of pine, cedar branches, cones, and any unnecessary rubber objects. Your fire will emit more black smoke, which makes it visible from afar. If you have no water in the desert but have some food, try to avoid eating for as long as you can. The more you eat, the more thirsty you'll get. The body needs liquid to digest food, so it'll use up what little you have. A person can live much longer without food than without water, so don't be afraid to stay hungry. Hey, you found a huge puddle of dirty water in the forest. If you're desperate for a drink, you can fill your bottle and filter it into drinking water. To clean it, make a rope of gauze or clothing. Put one end into the dirty bottle and the other one into the empty one. Before long, the clean water will flow into the empty bottle through the rope while the impurities are left behind. Before hiking, replace your regular shoelaces with paracord shoelaces. If you don't have enough rope, these laces can give you a few extra feet in a pinch. If you're lost in the forest and have nothing to warm you, then take dry leaves and grass from the ground and put it between two layers of clothing. This will help you stay warm for a long time. When you're lost in the desert, try to move as little as possible during the day. Find a shadow or create it from improvised materials and sit in the shade until dark. At night, you'll spend much less energy and use up less fluid while you walk. This will help you to avoid the risk of a heat stroke. If you fall through some ice, don't try to get out like you would in a pool. If you put your hands on the ice and try to push yourself out with your arms, it could crack and make you fall back into the water. 
you need to stretch your arms parallel to the ice surface and stretch your legs way back so they float in the water. In this horizontal position, start waving your legs as if you're swimming. Move your arms carefully without putting too much weight on the ice, and you should be able to escape. If you need to build a fire while it's too windy, here's what to do. Dig two holes next to each other and create a small underground tunnel between them. Make a fire in one of the pits. The wind can't extinguish it, and the fire gets its air through the second pit. This method is also useful if you need to build a fire without drawing attention. In the dark, this kind of fire won't be visible. Don't throw away or pop bubble wrap. Take it on a hike with you. It will protect you from the cold better than even a thick blanket would. Those tiny air bubbles are perfect insulation. Just put it in between layers of clothing, and it'll stop any warmth from escaping. The plastic it's made of is also waterproof, so it can stop you from getting wet, too. Swimming in the sea, not far from the shore, you can easily get swept up in rip currents. If this happens, the most important thing to remember is not to swim against the current. This will only waste your strength and sap your energy, and you're unlikely to ever overpower an ocean current. Instead, try to swim sideways along the shore. Sooner or later, you should get out of the current, and then you can safely swim to the beach. If you're stuck in a falling elevator, don't try to jump at the moment of collision. Don't take a sitting position or stand either. You need to lie on the floor, facing the ceiling. Spread your legs as wide as possible, cover your face with one hand, and put the other hand behind your head for protection. You reduce the pressure on your body in this position when you fall. Ooh, you're lost! A rescue helicopter flies over the forest, but you don't have a flare and don't have time to build a fire. Use a small mirror or phone screen to reflect the sunlight. Aim the light beam towards the helicopter. Rescuers should notice the glare and fly over to save you. You got used to browsing the web, playing games, and connecting with your friends on social media all at the convenience of the iPhone in your pocket. But what if I were to tell you that there were many more hidden uses inside it? Back tap. Have you ever noticed that fancy Apple logo on the back of your iPhone? If you've got a cover on, go ahead and pull it off so you can check it out. Okay, you're now probably thinking, there's nothing secret about this, the obvious brand logo on my iPhone. Sure, it might not seem so special, but did you know that it's more than just a handsome decoration? It's also, as a matter of fact, a button. Don't believe me? Give it a try. But before you go tapping at it like you're using your phone backward, you'll need to adjust your settings. There's a reason this handy feature is considered a secret. First, pull up your settings. Tap on Accessibility and then the Touch menu and navigate your way to the very bottom of the list where you'll find the back tap button. Found it? Great! You can choose the double tap or triple tap option, whichever you prefer. And best of all, you'll have a multitude of options to choose from. You can have your back tap feature take a photo with your camera app, alert Siri, switch apps, and even take a screenshot. It'll make things a lot easier than performing finger gymnastics when you need to take a screenshot. Adjust Siri's pronunciations. Have you ever asked Siri to call a friend? Maybe you've said, Siri, uh -huh. call Hermione, only for Siri to comply with calling Hermione. Okay, you may not have Harry Potter's best friend in your contacts list, but we can all agree it's not the easiest name to pronounce. Siri might be one of the most intelligent digital assistants in the smartphone game and sometimes a bit of a smarty pants. But iPhone's companion can often struggle to pronounce even the most common names. If this bothers you, then you'd be delighted to hear you can actually correct Siri's pronunciations. The simplest way is to catch Siri in the act and say, that's not how you pronounce. It will prompt Siri to ask for the correct pronunciation for each name, first, middle, and last or the name of a place if it's not for a person. Once you've given it, Siri will generate some options, and all you have to do is pick the correct one. If your digital best friend is still struggling, it might help to spell it out. 
Open your contacts. Select the person Siri is struggling to pronounce and choose Edit. You can add the correct pronunciation in the notes section using phonetic spelling and click pronunciation spelling to train Siri to get it right. Even a super smart digital assistant needs some help sometimes. Hey Siri, it's Leviosa, not Leviosar. Measure app is a toolkit too clunky to carry around? Or maybe you've forgotten which drawer you placed the measuring tape in. That's okay iPhone has got some more secrets that will help you out. Did you know that iPhone has a few tools in its arsenal that will serve your carpentry needs? Take the Measure app, for instance. You no longer need that long, awkward-to-use floppy tape to get a measurement on your coffee table, bookshelf, or couch. The app uses augmented reality to measure objects around you using your phone's camera. The first thing you'll need to do is move your phone around so the app can analyze the area you intend to measure. You'll eventually find a white circle with a dot in the middle of your screen. From there, it's not so different from an actual measuring tape. Just line up the dot with the corner of the object you want to measure and trace it to where you want the measurement to end. If you're a builder, you might want to stick to the physical tape for more accurate measurement. This option isn't necessarily for the professionals but the app is excellent for getting a rough estimate. The Measure app can also be used as a level. Simply switch over to the Level tab in your app and place your phone on the surface where you want to get a reading. When you get a green screen and a zero reading, your surface is nice and level. It's not so different from the Compass app's Level feature, so you might have had some bad experiences with this feature before. With your new digital toolbox, your iPhone will make you the handiest person in the house. Create Custom Vibration We all live pretty fast-paced and busy lives these days, and whether we're at work, in a movie, or at school, more often than not, we have our iPhone set to vibrate. Sure, there are some cool ringtones to choose from, but there aren't many occasions where a sudden tune coming from our pocket wouldn't distract those around us. Or worse yet, it leads to our phone being confiscated by a disgruntled employer or teacher. Luckily, there are plenty of vibration options to choose from. You probably have various ones for different occasions and different contacts. None of those settings quite your jam? Apple has a solution to this too. Another hidden feature in the iPhone is creating a custom vibration for your alerts. If you want to feel the beat to your favorite song when your best friend calls or texts, or when it's time to wake up in the morning, you create that pattern on your iPhone. Once again, you'll need to go into those handy settings, then in Sound and Haptics, choose the tone you'd like to customize. Tap Vibration. Then, Create New Vibration. The next step is to create those sweet vibrations like a soundless DJ by tapping your finger on the screen until you have the silent rhythm you're happy with. Now you've got a vibrate option to your liking. It might even make the early morning wake-up calls just a little more pleasant. Just like the Beach Boys, you'll be picking up good vibrations. Trackpad with smartphones, we no longer need two hands to use a keyboard. All you need is one good thumb. Yet, it can still prove a little tedious sometimes as typos are easy to make, and all your characters can't fit all at once on that crammed keyboard at the bottom of your phone screen. You might be typing out a long body of text, only to realize you left out the R out of the word drive a few sentences back, which might give your friends the wrong idea about what you're doing. It can be a fiddly task to fix it, and it's often easiest to delete the entire word and write it all over again. Or so it may seem. If you're a stickler for good grammar in your text messages, you might want to shift your keyboard into trackpad mode for easier editing. That's right, another hidden gem on your iPhone. It's easy to access too. All you have to do is hold your finger on the space bar. All the other keys will gray out and you'll be able to move the cursor to wherever it needs to go. Then, lift your finger off the spacebar to continue typing. 
Another tedium to writing on that tiny iPhone keyboard is shifting tabs to use numbers and symbols. It may not seem like much, but it's sure to be a little frustrating when you have to jump back and forth multiple times in the same message. However, there is another hidden feature in your iPhone's keyboard that will alleviate this. Hold it down instead of tapping on the numeric 123 tab, and it will bring up the numbers and symbols tab. As long as you're holding it, the tab will remain open to pick your character and releasing will return you to letters. Soon, you'll be fast enough to write a novel on your smartphone. Did you ever tie a string between two plastic cups so you could talk to your friend from opposite ends of your home? It may have seemed pretty cool at the time, but that plastic cup couldn't tell you the weather or let you send an email, right? Indeed, we've come a long way since the string telephone. In fact, can you even imagine life before smartphones? They have become almost like our clothes or the shoes we walk in. It's almost our consistent accessory. Now you know some of these handy secrets and you'll be an iPhone Pro. However, if these secrets aren't for you, there's always the string telephone. At least it won't run out of charge. I bet that's not what you imagine when you think of cashews. But a Redditor found them like this in a store in Brazil. It turns out they're not true nuts. Cashews emerge at the tip of a cashew apple. There's a special word for a fruit with a seed inside, a droop. So, cashews are droops, just like almonds and pistachios. Brazil is the homeland of cashews. The tree was brought to India by the Portuguese in the middle of the 16th century, and from there, it spread further to Asia and then to West Africa. Today, these regions are the largest producers of cashews. The biggest consumer is the USA. They get 90% of the world's harvest. Since we're talking about foods, I'll show you a couple more. This, for example, is how pineapples grow. Also, pineapples aren't one of those fruits that grow fast. They take from 16 up to 24 months to grow until they can be harvested. Also, one plant can only produce a maximum of three pineapples during its lifetime. Fun facts, every segment of a pineapple used to be a flower. Have you ever wondered why eggplants are called eggplants? Well, you've probably never seen an eggplant growing, so here's a picture. Now it makes sense, they literally look like growing eggs. Also, eggplants aren't vegetables. Botanically, they're berries, just like watermelons. Also, eggplants aren't only purple. They can also be white, green, and even purple with white stripes. You'll never guess what it is. It looks like a flower bouquet, but it's broccoli that hasn't been harvested. Those flowers are actually edible. Broccoli has been known for at least 2,000 years. It was the favorite food of the ancient Romans but it appeared in North America only in the 1920s. Italian immigrants were the ones to bring it to California and start selling it. Now, the USA is the third largest producer of broccoli, after China and India. And this is what an artichoke turns into if you let it bloom. So, an artichoke is actually an unbloomed flower. It's also one of the oldest foods humans know. Remember that a pineapple takes around two years to produce a fruit and a plant can only carry three pineapples during its life, if you're lucky. An artichoke plant grows 20 artichokes per year. The artichoke is one of the healthiest vegetables when it comes to antioxidants. Here's a photo of a sleeping turtle. Many of them sleep inside their shells. It's an instinct to protect themselves from predators. Still, some turtles can't retract to their shells, so they sleep in positions similar to this one. These animals are active during the day and sleep at night. The amount of sleep a turtle needs depends on the species. It can be from 10 hours to just one. On average, a turtle takes a four to six hour long nap. The most important factor for a turtle when it goes to sleep is to find a safe place. They can hide under leaves or in holes in the ground. Have you ever seen a chameleon's feet? You're welcome. So those guys have two toes on the inner side of the foot and three on the outer side when we talk about front feet. And it's the opposite for the back feet. Chameleons live on trees, and their feet help them climb better. We all know about chameleons' unique ability to change colors, but they don't change them to camouflage. In reality, the color depends on the chameleon's mood, temperature, humidity, and light. Also, do you know that some of them have tongues that are twice as long as their body? Ever seen a goose mouth from up close? They have teeth, only they're called beaks. 
Goose are very loyal creatures. It's not a myth that a duckling bonds with the first moving stimulus they see after hatching. No matter if it's a goose, a person, or even just an object, they will stay dedicated to that lucky creature or thing throughout their lives. Geese also mate for life, and they're very protective of their offspring. If they lose a loved one, they mourn them. Also, if a goose in a group gets sick or wounded, a couple of other geese will stay with it to protect and take care of it. This cute little buddy is a newborn alligator. But don't be tricked by its cute appearance. This little dude has around 60 teeth already. Also, it's not the DNA that determines the gender of an alligator. It's the temperature. If eggs were laid when it was hot, male alligators will hatch. If they stayed in colder temperatures, then there will be a bunch of females. After hatching, it takes an alligator 10 years to mature. Overall, alligators live around 35 years in the wild. Also, alligators can't live in salt water. Unlike crocodiles, they don't have special glands to excrete salt from their bodies. And this one is a newborn pigeon. I bet you've seen thousands of pigeons in your life, but probably never a newborn one. That's because newborn pigeons stay in the nest for around six weeks, which is longer than any other bird. By the time they're out, they almost look like grown-up pigeons, so no wonder you've never noticed the difference. Also, these guys are possibly the first birds domesticated by people. They are also experts in navigation. They can find their way back home from 1,300 miles afar. It's more than the distance between New York and Florida. It's believed that pigeons have an innate sense of direction. Back in ancient times, pigeons actually delivered mail. This is a cow's mouth. Those brushes are called conical papillae. They help a cow move food around in the mouth. Also, cows have a field of vision of 330 degrees, so there's little that can skip their attention. Remember that some turtles only need one hour of sleep a day? Cows sleep even less, around 30 minutes a day. And this time is divided into six to 10 short periods of deep sleep. These animals lie down for around 10 hours a day, but the rest of the time, they move around, covering quite long distances. And yeah, they also drink around 26 gallons of water a day. Can you guess what this is? It's sand, under 300 times magnification. Sand is rock broken into micro pieces after eroding after millions of years. Also, communities of microbes live on a single grain of sand. Things can get really small in this world. Even though there's a lot of it, sand is still a valuable material. Concrete is made out of it. And also, some countries, like the United Arab Emirates in Singapore, have shipped tons of sand to extend their territory by creating additional islands. Apparently, this is what sinuses look like. They're hollow spaces in your facial bones, behind the forehead, nose, cheekbones, and between the eyes. Those are very important, since they produce mucus, which is a fluid in your nose that filtrates, warms, and moisturizes the air you breathe in. Sinuses also help you detect tastes. Without this ability, the food would be way less delicious. This is the inside of a bowling ball. You may notice that it isn't symmetrical inside, so the weight isn't distributed evenly. This allows the ball to make curves. By the way, do you know that bowling appeared 5,000 years ago in ancient Egypt? Yep, it's not a new sport, and it was popular all over the world. The rules and equipment were different everywhere, though. The first bowling lane was constructed only in the 19th century in New York. This right here is a forgotten pack of cotton candy. Bottom line, don't forget about it, otherwise it'll shrink as if it never existed. Cotton candy is only made of two ingredients, colored sugar and air. So now we know that the only ingredient in the world that is, so far, free, air. Also, a thread of cotton candy is actually thinner than a hair. By the way, December 7th is National Cotton Candy Day. Hope you celebrated. If not, mark this day in your calendars for the next year. With only two ingredients, this stuff has zero fat. Also, it was created by a candy maker and a dentist. Imagine you're an art detective, and your task is to explore the mysteries behind the world's most famous paintings. I'm talking about works from Da Vinci, Michelangelo, Picasso. So, grab your magnifying glass, as this journey is about to begin. First off on your list is Rome. After enjoying delicious pasta, you head to the Sistine Chapel, home to the world's most famous ceiling. Oh, and you know how they say Michelangelo painted the frescoes lying down? 
This is just a myth. Actually, the painter created a complex system of platforms that allowed him to paint standing. You're checking out the creation of Adam, that fresco in the middle. The Italian artist Michelangelo, the author of this masterpiece, was widely known for his study of human anatomy. Art experts argue that the right part of the painting is an anatomically correct depiction of an enlarged brain. To proof check this, you try overlapping a picture of the organ and the artwork. It seems to be a match. The cerebellum, the optic nerve, and the pituitary gland are all there. Even the floating green scarf thingy appears to match the vertebral artery. Some researchers think it was Michelangelo's way of depicting knowledge and wisdom. But you have to sleep on it to decide what you think. Moving on, you catch a train and arrive in Florence. Time for a quick gelato break, then straight to the Academia Gallery. One of art's most celebrated sculptures is waiting for you inside. Michelangelo's David. David is a 17-foot tall marble wonder. It was carved for about three years. The mystery surrounding it is to figure out the statue's true expression. Looking at him from below, you'll think his face is serene and peaceful. But art historians argue that this work was largely misunderstood. Apparently, his body hides a very different story. Take a closer look, and you'll notice his brows are frowning, and the veins in his arms are popping out. That doesn't look too relaxed, does it? Michelangelo's idea was to depict David right before an important confrontation. So maybe he wasn't all that serene after all. Italy is so rich in art, you can't leave just yet. You're still in Florence. You pay a visit to the famous Uffizi Gallery. Many famous paintings are hosted by this museum, but you're checking out Botticelli's Primavera, or Spring. This artwork is mysterious from the get-go. Experts can't say the exact year it was commissioned. It remained untitled for years, until the painter Giorgio Vasari finally came up with a name for it. Usually, when critics and viewers admire this painting, they focus on the figures in the foreground. But in this case, the actual work lies in that Botticelli painted over 46 different plant species with almost identical precision. And, oh, in the painting overall, these plant figures are repeated over 200 times. Unbelievable! I'd say the last visits were full of impressions, weren't they? Ready to keep going? A plane ride later, you arrive in Paris, the city of lights, berets, and the famous Mona Lisa. You go through the Museum de Louvre and come to Leonardo da Vinci's masterpiece, La Gioconda. There are many theories regarding this work of art, and you dive into some of them. A strong case has been made that the Mona Lisa could be a self-portrait of da Vinci himself. Historians have thoroughly compared da Vinci's face and that of the Mona Lisa. And guess what? They appear to be strikingly similar. Oh, and then there's the smirk theory. Dentist and art expert Joseph Bartowski claims to have discovered the secret behind Mona Lisa's smirk. He says her tight facial expression is a typical indication of someone who lost their front teeth. Could it be so? Also, in 2010, the Italian Committee for Cultural Heritage found a collection of symbols hidden in the painting. These are only visible through highly technological magnifying lenses, but they showed that Leonardo inscribed an LV inside Mona Lisa's right eye. Experts guess that this is da Vinci's signature, but the other symbols, a CE in the left eye and a 72 in the arch of the background bridge, are still very mysterious. Phew, you covered a lot of ground on this one. Ah, of course, at the end of your visit, remember to test if her eyes really follow you around. Now you're headed to Amsterdam to check out the Rijksmuseum. You came to see a specific Rembrandt painting that hides a mysterious story. The Night Watch is one of Rembrandt's most famous paintings, but experts argue that the name of the painting and its content are mismatched. Let's take a closer look. The painting depicts a large group ready to embark on a mission. Rembrandt's technique is called chiaroscuro, highlighting the contrast between light and shade. Until 1947, art critics believed the painter was depicting a nighttime scene. But when the painting was cleared of a thick dust layer, 
it became clear that the scene was happening in broad daylight, with the sun streaming down from the top left. Now, it's too late to change its name to The Day Watch. While in Amsterdam, you find a museum dedicated to Van Gogh's art. Did you know that he painted over 900 paintings during an impressive period of only 10 years? Anyway, the Van Gogh Museum hosts the biggest collection of yellow sunflower paintings you'll probably see in your life. Actually, almost all of Van Gogh's paintings feature dominant yellow shades. This particularity of his art may be a result of how he saw the world. Some art experts have speculated that one of Van Gogh's remedies changed his color perception, making him see more yellow around him. Okay, so this trip just keeps getting better. The next stop on your list is the United Kingdom. Then, on to the National Gallery. You may spend hours looking at Jan van Eyck's painting Arnolfini Portrait and not see anything out of the ordinary. In the foreground, a couple holds hands and stares at the viewer. But if you zoom in on the mirror on the wall, you'll see two more people in the room. Art experts say the male figure in the painting has his hands raised to greet these two people seen in the mirror, and that one of the figures is von Eyck himself. Oh, and that's not the only watermark the painter left. Above the mirror, you'll see his flamboyant signature. Jan von Eyck was here, 1434. And speaking of people trying to sneak into their art, Caravaggio, the renowned Italian Renaissance painter, left a little Easter egg in one of his famous paintings, Bacchus. This one is a bit difficult to spot. In the half-filled jar in the bottom left corner of the painting, there is a tiny self-portrait of the painter himself, hidden amongst the liquid. To see the image clearly, one needs the help of sophisticated technology, or at least a very efficient magnifying lens. But it's there, a male figure, aka Caravaggio, with a brush in his hand. Fun fact, the tiny self-portrait was first noticed in 1922, over 300 years after the painting was completed. It was forgotten due to poor conservation. To finish the trip, you fly overseas across the Atlantic, all the way to Chicago. The enormous collection of the Art Institute hosts a well-known painting by Pablo Picasso, The Old Guitarist. This painting's secret is so well hidden that it also needs the help of x-ray machines and super fancy technology. But the results are worth it. The readings show that Picasso painted the old guitarist on top of another unfinished painting. We can clearly see the outlines and shapes of a half-drawn female figure that Picasso gave up on mid-work. The emerging artists of the time used that way of saving money quite often, as canvases were expensive. This was quite a tiring world trip, wasn't it? Get some rest, Sherlock of all. There's nothing better than a nice piece of buttered toast for breakfast, if we're not counting hot fudge sundaes. But if you find it harder to spread out cold butter over your toast, here's an idea. Use a cheese grater. Figure out the amount you need and grate the product. The process will also soften the butter, making it easier to spread, and you won't have to melt a too large amount of it in the process. But still, that hot fudge. Dried pasta comes in all sorts of different shapes and sizes for a reason. That's because each type of pasta goes best with a particular sauce. Pasta shells, for example, are perfect with denser and chunkier sauces. Why? because the sauce gets inside the shells, making it easier to serve and eat the dish. The ribbed outer surface also helps with covering the shells in the sauce. If you ever end up burning your cookies, ow! you can save them with your trusty grater, too. Just grate off the blackened parts after carefully taking the cookies from the baking tray. But be careful and wait until the cookies have cooled down. Also, if you ruin their shape a bit, you can always dip them in some melted chocolate. Ooh. After the chocolate cools down, you'll have perfectly shaped cookies. Although, after it gets past your lips and beyond, does the shape of the cookie actually matter? Mm, just saying. If you like adding a lot of ingredients to your sandwiches, but don't really appreciate it when the bread gets soggy, there is a way to reduce the amount of moisture. Pick your sliced tomatoes or cucumbers and place them between two paper towels for up to 5 minutes. After that, you can use them. Also, make sure to spread butter, cheese, or sauces, like mayo or ketchup, onto the bread first. 
This will help you seal the bread and keep moisture at bay. Some people think that the little white string that you find near an egg yolk needs to be removed before you cook the egg. Well, I'm here to tell you that these strands are called calaza, and you don't actually need to get rid of them. They help keep the yolk in place at the egg center. A calaza is not going to mess up the consistency or the taste of your food, so removing it is completely up to you. Ever notice that most juice boxes come with two flaps, one on each side? Those are actually handles. Manufacturers design the boxes this way to make it easier for us to hold them. This way, we don't end up squeezing the box, making the juice spill out. Now, you don't need to be a baking pro to know that you can use both white and brown sugar in your recipes. But have you ever wondered what the difference between these two is? It turns out that the only thing that sets them apart is that, during production, a small amount of molasses is added to the brown sugar. Molasses is basically a sort of syrup you get when processing sugarcane. It's usually removed during the refining process. That's how white sugar is produced. But if some amount of molasses remains in the final product, we end up with brown sugar, with its specific taste and darker hue. It's a good thing. There are a lot of things you can put in your dishwasher apart from your dishes. For example, you can clean such things as your silicone oven mitts or the knobs of some kitchen appliances, like your oven or stove. Some kitchen sponges and reusable towels may be safe to clean in the dishwasher as well. Speaking of kitchen cleaning products, there are a lot of things you can do with dish soap, like degriming your patio furniture. Just add a bit of dish detergent to some warm water and use the solution to wipe down your outdoor furniture with a piece of cloth. Finally, rinse it clean using your garden hose. You can also use dish soap to get rid of greasy stains on your clothes be it pasta sauce or salad dressings. Hey, sometimes we miss our mouths! So, just apply a little dish detergent to the stain and then rinse with water. Use non-colored soap for lighter clothes. For more difficult stains, let the dish soap sink in for a bit, then throw the piece of clothing in the washer as usual. And think about maybe getting a bib. If none of the methods have helped you organize your closet and you're still overwhelmed with large piles of clothes, there's a simple way that might be effective. It's called the one-in, one-out rule. That means for every new piece of clothing you buy, you need to get rid of one you already have. That means you'll always be decluttering your space. To make it easier to find something in your closet, good luck, keep your most used items at eye level. This way, they'll be easier to find and pull out when you're in a hurry. Those items that you tend to use less often, like your evening clothes, for example, can stay on the shelves above or below your eye level. You can make good use of old spice tins. If you glue some powerful magnets to the inside of the tins, they can double as magnetic shelves. You can use them for all sorts of everyday items, like kitchen pliers, ice cream scoops, mm, or even cutlery. You can also place them on any metallic surface, like your refrigerator door. They'll blend in nicely with your kitchen magnets. Hidden in your laundry room, there's a great tool for picking up pet hair. It sometimes works better than lint rollers. Take a dryer sheet and, using some elbow grease, you'll get rid of that dog or cat hair in no time. It works on all sorts of surfaces, but it's especially effective for upholstered furniture. Now, if you don't like it when a door starts squeaking whenever you enter a room, get a bar of soap and rub it straight on the hinges. This will only help for a while, though. But it'll do the trick until you manage to get to a hardware store and, you know, buy some oil. Have you ever noticed that in some elevators, there's a star next to the number of a specific floor? No, it's not to indicate where my office is. (laughs) It's there to point out where the nearest exit is. And it's not always on the first floor. It's most likely located on the floor closest to the street. Have you ever wondered why stop signs are red? Well, back in the day, they didn't actually have any particular color at all. Before the 1920s, they didn't even have a standardized shape. In 1922, though, someone came up with the octagon. But initially, it was painted yellow. All because the red coloring tended to fade out too quickly because of sun exposure. So yellow turned out to be the best option. It took another 30 years for fade-resistant enamel paint to be invented. 
we ended up changing the color of the stop sign back to red. After all, it's still the best color if you want something to be easily noticeable. Do you know there's a type of rose that can grow taller than people? According to the Guinness Book of World Records, the tallest rose bush ever found grew in Vienna, Austria. It was a staggering 28 and a half feet tall. Yes, it arose to a great height. In the same way we all have unique patterns on our fingerprints, no two tigers have the same set of stripes. It makes it easier for people working with this feline species to distinguish one tiger from another. I'll bet you didn't know the White House has its own flower shop hidden in the basement of the building. It's supposed to provide flower arrangements for all sorts of events that take place there. It's probably no surprise that pizza has become an American staple dish despite its Italian origin. People in the U.S. love it so much that they buy 350 slices of pizza every second in the States. Man, I'm not getting my fair share. To manage the huge demand for this delicious dish, around 17% of all restaurants in the U.S. are pizzerias. Finally, there's a way to make lemon juice without the seeds getting into your beverage. Try cutting the fruit in two and squeezing it with a pair of kitchen tongs. The pointed end of the lemon should be facing down. The juice will flow down, but the seeds will remain inside the lemon. Ooh, lemonade. It goes well with pizza. You're trying on a pair of jeans, a dress, or a jacket, and are about to dig your hand into the pocket when you realize there's no depth to it. The pocket is simply not there. But why would anyone create pockets you can't put anything in? And uh, now would be a good time to pick your iPhone up from off the floor. Well, the reason for fake pockets is simple. If a clothing item has a specific cut or shape, pockets may spoil it. They can alter the item's shape, either in the warehouse or already on the retail rack. The solution? Getting rid of pockets in key areas. Plus, fake pockets are obviously cheaper, and they don't get stretched out. Interestingly, this practice goes back to the 17th century. That's when pockets were actually removable. They resembled small bags, and women, for example, could move them from one outfit to another. Unfortunately, it was also very convenient for pickpockets. They could grab such a pocket and run off with it. Then, clothes became more streamlined, and slim pockets started to be sewn right into them instead of attachable bags. This was believed to make the shape of a person's silhouette more alluring. But soon, slimmer skirts came into fashion and pockets went out of it, and people started using handbags instead. These days, most pockets are real, but some of them are still fake. So how can we make sure that we don't actually turn a fake pocket into a hole thinking it's a real one? Well, first of all, take a look at the stitching along the edge of the pocket, where it's supposed to open up. If you see a single loose thread, just snip a piece of it and start pulling gently. If the pocket is real, the thread will easily come out. But if you feel that the stitching won't budge, most likely you have a faux pocket on your hands. If this is the case, just leave it be. Now let's move on to some other everyday objects that may be hiding some secrets. For example, those lines on some kinds of chips. For one thing, they help with the distribution of spices and seasonings. In other words, all those substances that make your chips taste like cheese are mostly stored inside the lines. Plus, the lines make chips crunchier. Highlighters are filled with a special semi-transparent fluorescent ink that can glow in dim light. Yellow and light green hues are the most popular because they don't prevent you from seeing the text after black and white photocopying. Photocopiers perceive yellow and light green marks as almost non-existent and don't print them. Now, back in the day, the first jeans had one problem. Workers and miners, who were the original jeans wearers, put too much pressure on the poor piece of clothing. As a result, the seams couldn't withstand the stress and tore. So, tiny metal studs were invented to prevent this from happening. Most metallic zippers have a hidden lock inside them. That's why you shouldn't leave the zipper handle in an upward position. When you pull it downwards, it automatically locks. It's all thanks to several tiny grooves hidden underneath the handle. Now, about those horizontal lines on plastic bottles. They help hold bottles up. Some bottles are produced from soft plastic. 
Without the lines, they wouldn't keep their shape. Instead, they would twist easily or even break. Bath foam isn't only for fun or a nice smell. It helps regulate the temperature, too. The bubbles keep the water hot, and you can enjoy your bath a bit longer, with or without your rubber ducky. Ever notice that layer of clear liquid and gel pens? It's called the ink follower or stopper fluid. The gel in such pens contains pigment particles dissolved in a polymer solution. The gel should be thick enough to keep the pigment particles suspended, but also thin enough to flow first onto the ball and then the paper. The main task of the stopper fluid is to be a barrier to prevent the gel from evaporating or leaking out. Without this transparent fluid, your gel pen wouldn't function. The fluid always stays in one position and doesn't get dissolved with the gel. Neither does it move backward or flow out of the pen. The holes in the bottoms of your earphones allow air to circulate up and through the speakers. It allows to increase low frequencies, making the bass sound deeper. The quality of the sound also becomes much better. Some plastic milk containers have dents on their sides. Try as they might, they just cannot park without some damage. Nah, I made that up. These dents serve several purposes. For one thing, when milk spoils, this process usually causes swelling and high-pressure buildup inside the container. Oh boy! That's when the dent comes in handy. It pops out and doesn't let the jug blow up. Plus, if you ever decide to freeze the milk, it will expand like any other liquid. And then again, the indentation will pop out and prevent the container from breaking inside your freezer. That's a good thing. Airplane windows have rounded edges, and that's a crucial safety measure. It prevents aircraft accidents. Weak spots are usually situated in the corners. If airplane windows were square or rectangular, each of them would have four potential weak spots. Under pressure, they would collapse. If you look closely at a tram's overhead lines, you'll see that its contact wires zigzag back and forth instead of going in a straight line. The thing is that all trams have pantographs attached to their roofs. The upper part of the pantograph is gradually worn down by the overhead wire and eventually needs to be replaced. To wear it down evenly, the wire is not installed strictly along the tram's path but in zigzag patterns. As the tram moves, the pantograph slides along the wire and it wears down evenly. You might have wondered why some gas cans have two holes with caps one bigger and one smaller. Before, I thought that the little hole was used when you poured something into a smaller container. But Mm -hmm. I was wrong. A very infrequent occasion. In reality, you're supposed to uncap it before you pour the gas inside the bigger hole to prevent it from glugging and spilling on your clothes and on the ground. Most of the buttonholes on a shirt are vertical, but the top and sometimes bottom ones are horizontal. The reason is simple. These two buttons slip out more often than others. Luckily, producers have found the solution that can prevent these buttons from slipping out. Horizontal buttonholes. What engineering? Buttons tend to slip out less from such buttonholes. Stick sachets of sugar or salt are easier to open than many people think. There's no need to tear off one of the ends. The right way is actually to tear them down the middle. Some boots have loops sticking out on the back. Their main purpose is to help you pull your shoes on easier. Just tug on the loop while you're pushing your heel into the boot. You can also use these loops to hang your boots on a hook when they're dirty or when you want to dry them after washing. Or you can run your laces through the loop if you want to tie them around your ankle. When you're on board the plane, you might spot a little triangle over your seat. Such triangles show the flight crew the best spots to check the plane's flaps through the window, just in case they're flapping. If your shoes are really slippery, just take a bit of sandpaper and rub it on the soles for better traction. They'll become more grippy and you'll be able to wear them out in the rain. Now, if they get too wet, they might turn gripey, but that's only if you have talking shoes. If you drill several holes at the bottom of your garbage can, putting in and taking out trash bags will become much easier. You won't have any problems with suction. You can usually find some silica gel in bags, shoes, and many other things you buy. This shell absorbs excess moisture. Don't throw it away. Each time your shoes get wet, put a few packets of silica gel inside. The thermos wasn't actually invented to keep your coffee warm. 
It was made by a Scottish scientist who just wanted a safe place to put his chemicals at a stable temperature. So he took two bottles, put the smaller one inside the bigger one, and vacuumed out the air between them. Well, anyway, thanks for the hot coffee.